everyone, I'm Tasha with Forever Bliss Crochet. Welcome to my channel. So today I am talking to you about New Year's resolutions and how one of them changed my life. And I'm coming to you today from my alpaca ranch because they are part of this story. So this starts back in uh, 2010. The year before that, I had just gotten back into crochet. And so my New Year's resolution for 2010 was to not crochet alone. And I wanted to seek out uh, social groups that, you know, I could go be a part of um, and not just crochet by myself at home sitting on the couch, which is what I had been doing. <laughs> so 2010 came and I, this is at, at that time I was living in Chicago, you know, so a large city, a lot of opportunities to meet people. Uh, a lot of groups had already been established for this type of social fiber fun. So, um... I did find a number of groups. Um, some of them were um, guild groups. Some were just uh, community groups. Some were on meetup.com. Some were Yahoo groups that met in person. A variety of things. And uh, they were either kind of general fiber arts groups or uh, knitting groups that said they were open to crocheters. Those are my llamas. I have three of them here. Bridget's the one that just jumped up with all them spots. And then you can see her baby, Gus, there <laughs> nursing. <laughs> and the one she just uh, ran off with Thunder. <laughs> oh, you probably got, uh, uh, you saw what happened there, why she got up and did that. Did that have to do with Gus? I'm guessing. I could be wrong. I'll watch this later and see. <laughs> okay, so back to my story. Um, for a number of months, uh, it would be, you know, the winter of 2010, I went and tried out these groups. And what I found was that even though they were open to crocheters or welcoming to crocheters, they said that my experience was not the case. I actually felt tolerated, not really welcomed, um, and that crochet was looked down upon, especially by knitters and uh, I did not feel supported. I did not feel encouraged to crochet or to grow my skills. Um, and so that spring, I decided to start my own group because in talking to other crocheters that I did meet, they kind of experienced uh, very similar things that I did and uh, felt the same way about these groups. Uh, so I said, okay, well, I'm going to start a crochet only group where we all get to support each other and we're not being judged because we're crocheters. All right, so that group started and um, grew steadily. It was a really big hit. And in the process of starting that group, you know, I had to find places for us to meet. Um, so I was trying out uh, yarn stores and libraries and coffee shops and, uh, you know, places like that. Ultimately, we did find a good home for the group. And um, five years later, they still meet at that place. Um you know, naturally I'm not in Chicago anymore, but um, in the process of looking for space, I end up meeting with the new owner of a yarn store who hired me as a crochet teacher um, to teach lessons regularly in her shop. Uh, I had never taught crochet before. Certainly no one ever paid me to teach them to crochet. Um, so that, that experience really... Um, changed the trajectory of ultimately where my life was going to go. Forgive my squinting. It is winter sun and it's very low. <laughs> oh, so I just have to deal with me squinting a little bit. <laughs> okay, so um, while working at that store, I learned what natural fibers were. Before that time, I had only used acrylics, you know, whatever was in the big box stores because um, that's where I started my crochet adventures, was in one of those big crafty stores. Um, and so that's where I always went back to buy my yarn. Um, now I was learning about natural fibers and all the textures and colors and awesomeness that there is. So um, I also learned about the, the animals that all those fibers came from. And I was really fascinated by it all and kind of filed all that information in the back of my mind. Well, later that year... Um, I committed to go to South Korea for a year to teach English. 
So my family and I, we went on vacation about three weeks before I was supposed to leave the country. And the area that we were at had an alpaca farm. I don't remember how I discovered that it was there. Um, I saw, must have saw an ad somewhere. I don't really remember where. But I remember seeing it and saying, okay, I want to go. And because this vacation was all about spending time with me, we went. <laughs> um, and that visit now is the second time I ever met an alpaca. The first time would have been at a fiber festival where I, I just kind of saw them in passing. I didn't really stop and learn much about them. So at this fiber farm, I really learned about them. And I had already been toying with the idea of, you know, owning a yarn shop and just loving and really being fascinated with yarn in general. So this was kind of right up my alley and... Um, I really fell in love with alpacas that day, and I went home absolutely obsessed. I mean, never in my life had I experienced that type of draw to something um, or an idea of something taking me over in the way that that did. So going home, I read everything that was given to me. I went online, and I found all the information I could possibly find what I did a week before I left the country I bought an alpaca she's actually here she's not in in view at the moment but I have her she was pregnant at the time and I paid to have her board at the place where I bought her from while I was out of the country and while I was in Korea I made business plans I did more research and decisions about what I wanted my business to focus on and where I was going to do it. One of the decisions I did make was coming to South Central Nebraska where my family has history and obviously there's land because alpacas is not something you can do in the city. So I came to a place where I could. Um, I'm 700 miles away, but um, this is definitely a good place for me to do this. And, um, you know, I had different plans for my life before I went to Korea. I had made, made different plans of what I would do when I returned back to the United States. And um, visiting that alpaca farm totally blew those plans out of the water. Um, so when I came back to the United States, I went full force and I dove right into my plan and started doing this. And that was four and a half years ago. And um, now I raise alpacas and I teach crochet professionally. When I moved to Nebraska... I, fe I found a completely different attitude towards crochet, um, which was really weird to me. I thought everywhere was like Chicago was in, in the perception of people. It, like I said before, um, Chicago is very uh, heavily knit, knitters, which makes sense why there was more groups for knitters um, and a lot less crocheters. But here, people want to crochet and not knit. I've actually encountered the opposite attitude in my part of Nebraska. I can't speak for the whole state or the whole region. Um, but in my area, it's the opposite attitude where people are not interested in knitting. I'm like, well, I can teach you to knit too because I do both now. But um, <laughs> no, the, the attitude is very uh, pro-crochet, very supportive of crochet. And I started teaching classes at a nearby town that sold yarn, which led to me teaching at the local community college, which I have done for the last three years. And that developed into becoming a professional crochet teacher because of those experiences, um, or all my experiences, but teaching at, you know, a community college really kind of propelled me into that. So, you know, I make my living from my alpacas and my crochet, and the this is the business that that I'm growing and developing now and because I taught at the community college was the reason I started this channel. It, it was to be a support to my students there and now this has grown into something else too. Um, and in 2017 you'll see uh, more things develop with this channel um, and if you keep up with my life there's other things going on there too related to alpacas and yarn and crochet and all kinds of fiber lovelies. So. Stay tuned to the channel because you'll hear more. Um, but I'm curious if you've ever made a crochet resolution, whether it be at New Year's or some other time, um, one of those decisions that changed your life in some way. Um, or 
are you wanting to make a crochet New Year's resolution coming up? Or maybe you're watching this um, some other part of the year, some other time of the year, where you can just make a decision to make a change, right? Um, but what are you interested in pursuing with your crochet? What is your crochet resolution? I'd like to hear. Sorry, I got more on my llama's thunder right here. Hi, bud. Will be on camera? Oh, that was his nose. Maybe later. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> so leave a comment for me below and let me know. And uh, we'll keep in touch. Thanks for tuning in today. I'll talk to you later. Bye.